Recently, Radio Free Asia discovered and revealed that Cambodian diplomat Wang Yao Wei has a major stake in Birmingham City's FC shares. Unfortunately for the club, they didn't disclose that information to the English Football League. This has major implications regarding the club's relationship to the English Football League, which is now inquiring into the situation. We'll be covering that and more in today's video. First up, the revelation. At the end of March, Radio Free Asia, a news agency dedicated to providing uncensored press coverage in Asia, reported on the dubious history of Wang Yaowei. They revealed that he's a China-born man who has considerable ties to Cambodia and a political power couple that resides there. The article traced his adventures all the way from China to Zambia, then to Cambodia, and finally to Singapore. But this isn't where it ends for his business ventures. The piece was primarily an investigation into over $230 million worth of property and financial interests residing in the city of Singapore that have been tied to Cambodia's ruling party. However, in the process of this investigation, this story of personal drama and political intrigue seeped into the sports industry. How? Well, it turns out that when the RFA was investigating Wang Hui, they found out that he actually had shares in the English football club Birmingham City FC. It may sound like a random piece of trivia about an eccentric businessman, but it links to the broader investigation of Hui's rise through the hierarchies of power in Asia. Unfortunately for Birmingham City FC, his career interests might have just landed them in a huge amount of legal trouble. Next, we have league relations. Birmingham City FC participated participates in the English Football League, which, with the Premier League, forms the top tier of football leagues in the nation. The league has strict policies for member clubs, which state that members need to disclose the identities of any people that hold a significant interest in the club. The problem is that the club hadn't listed Wang Hui's name in any of their official documents. The RFA contacted the league in regards to this finding, and a spokesperson soon responded saying that they were looking into the situation and would take it up with the club. But of course, it isn't as simple as the club just avoiding disclosing Mr. Mr. Wang's name in their documents. RFA figured Yao Hui himself concocted the scheme. We'll get into the context of why the RFA framed Wang's involvement with the club in the way they did later, but you should know that it follows from the way he conducted himself in other political and business matters prior to being involved in this situation. Essentially, Yao Hui wanted to avoid being directly linked to anything that could jeopardize his finances and political standing in Cambodia. The RFA's investigation showed them that the company that holds 75% of the club in its entirety, Birmingham Sports Holdings Limited is owned in part by a company called Dragon Villa Limited. The holdings company is located in the Cayman Islands, while Dragon Villa is based in the British Virgin Islands. This globe hopping already raises some red flags, but considering the listed owner of Dragon Villa is a Chinese citizen named Li Su Tong, things were still looking good for Wang Yaowei. And for the Englishman in Birmingham City, it might have seemed that they could relax a little, since they did list Dragon Villa and Li Su Tong in their disclosure statement. But once again, the RFA team had another card to play. And now, for Dragon Villa and Legality RFA eventually learned that the CEO of Birmingham Sports Holdings Limited actually took a three-hour-long trip with Yao Hui in his private jet in China in 2017. Two months later, a mysterious new company, also based in the British Virgin Islands called Ever Depot Limited, bought $39 million worth of shares in Birmingham Sports, almost a quarter of its total stocks. Ever Depot itself is listed at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange as being owned by Graticity Real Estate Development. Surprise, surprise, that company's actually actually based in Cambodia and was owned by Yao Wei until 2017. That's when he handed the company over to someone sources say is a close relative of his that frequently fronts ownership of assets for him. Coincidentally, or not so much, that's the same year that Dragon Villa purchased shares in Birmingham Sports. Whatever the reasons Yao Wei might have had for jumping through these hoops in order to own part of a club, Birmingham's going to have to defend itself once it comes under scrutiny. If found guilty of not disclosing the required documentation, they might have sanctions imposed on them in national leagues for a significant amount of time. Up next, negligent organizers and lost owners. Things are never so simple. If the league does report that it's found evidence of foul play on the part of the club, it might have to answer for the situation itself. You see, this isn't the first time someone's brought up Wang Yaowei's involvement in Birmingham City to the league. Since 2017, Daniel Ivory, an avid fan of the club, has been complaining to the league about Yaowei. But according to him, every single time he did, the league refused to even acknowledge that there might be an issue there. Things might only play out differently now because Wang's been brought into the spotlight through RFA's journalism. Regardless, as of yet, the league has stated nothing new about the situation. Apart from the league itself, there's a lot of pressure for the club to release a statement on the matter. The club only responded to RFA's inquiries days after, and even then it was just the media manager promising to raise the issue with the board, with little chance of a considered reply from them. The club has also released no official statement since then. However, it's only a matter of time before things get more heated for the league and 
and the club, and we might soon get some more information out of these organizations. Time for some other news, starting with EFL bolstering inclusivity. Football is a beloved sport across the entire world, with hundreds of thousands of fans in nearly every country. However, there are a number of football-crazed nations that command attention from fans of the sport in all others. One of them is, of course, the UK. And within the UK, everyone's watching the Premier League and the English Football League. But not everyone has the privilege of watching it the same way that most others do. Many that would love to watch their favorite teams compete may suffer from colorblindness, and there's always a chance that certain teams opposing each other might not have kits that translate well to colorblind audiences when weaving through each other on the field. That is why the EFL is introducing a new policy starting next season. Teams now have the option to wear their away or third kit despite being on home ground. This has the potential to avoid clashes of similar tinted clothing that could be confusing for colorblind audiences to watch. The teams can also mix and match the various elements of their uniforms to make the contrast as vast as possible. We're not sure if this policy will be taken advantage of much in the coming season, but we're glad teams now at least have the option to do so. And now, a pitch invader crackdown. There are a lot of times when fans go a little overboard during or after a football match. The semifinals of the last EFL season happened to be plagued by a good many of them. Primarily, the thing that organizers are most concerned about are the people that can't help but run onto the green when it just isn't the right time for it. The reasoning that the chief executive gave is that such behavior is unacceptable because it provides cover for the few people that might actually want to cause harm. Back in early May, a fan was actually jailed for running out onto the field after Sheffield United won their semifinal game and headbutting one of the players from the team. Imagine having given your all to a game and coming out victorious in what must be an extremely emotional moment only to be charged by a spectator and assaulted. It's definitely good evidence for use against those who believe that pitch invaders are harmless. The heads at the EFL certainly think such incidents warrant additional policies to deal with such behavior, which could soon include a reduction in spectator capacity of matches, as well as large fines for the offenders. Finally, EFL substitute changes. Back in the 2019-2020 season, changes were made to the rules regarding substitutes in the major English leagues. This allowed teams to make five substitutes in a match as opposed to the regular three. However, in the two seasons that followed, all leagues once again reverted back to the three-sub format. Back in March, the English Premier League, the top tier of leagues in the nation, reinstated the rule. Now, after a meeting of all 72 member teams, the EFL is finally following suit, allowing five substitutes out of a total of seven benched players in a match. This means we'll be seeing a lot of interesting new rosters and strategies coming into play soon. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Birmingham City FC knew about Wang Yaohui all along and were knowingly withholding information? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.